He murdered his own father, to be emperor of the Dark Sway dynasty. In the ancient reign of the Sui dynasty, a name rose in Chinese history, a name that evokes shades of cruelty and excess, Emperor Yang Guan, also known as Yangdi. His days were between 569 and 618 AD, an era marked by light and shadow in ancient China. Born Yang Ying, his destiny was shaped by dark omens that led his father to change his name to Yang Guan. This man, who would become the second and last emperor of his dynasty, is remembered by posterity as one of the most ruthless tyrants in Chinese history. His reign was a discordant symphony of cruelty, waste and military disasters. Welcome to the Diary of History. This emperor, immersed in the maelstrom of his ambitions, did not hesitate to commit atrocious acts. The blood of his family stained his hands, murdering his own father and his older brother in his eagerness to reach the throne. The intelligence of two talented poets also succumbed under his tyrannical rule. Not satisfied with these acts, he enslaved millions of his subjects to work as mere pawns in the construction of his pharaonic projects. Unfortunately, throughout history, there have been numerous cases of sons murdering their fathers in order to usurp the imperial throne or power. One of the most notorious cases of this type of crime is that of Yang Guang, a Chinese prince who killed his own father, Emperor Wen, in order to become emperor and rule the empire. According to some historical sources, Yang Guang used a poison pill that would supposedly give him immortality to carry out his sinister plan. Yang Guang, also known as Emperor Yang, was a controversial figure in Chinese history. He was born in 569 and was the second son of Emperor Wen, who had founded the Sui dynasty in 581. From a young age, Yang Guang showed an unbridled ambition and thirst for power that would lead him to commit one of the most heinous crimes in the history of the dynasty. Emperor Wen, Yang Guang's father, had ruled wisely and prudently, managing to unify China after a period of division and chaos. Under his rule, the empire prospered, and numerous reforms were carried out to improve the administration, economy and society in general. However, as Yang Guang grew older, he became more impatient and eager to obtain the imperial throne. According to historical chronicles, Yang Guang began to plot against his father in secret. The main reason behind his plan was his desire for absolute power and his belief that he alone was worthy to rule China. To achieve his goal, he decided to remove his father, Emperor Wen, from the equation. Poisoning is a common form of assassination in the history of Chinese dynasties, and Yang Guang opted for this method to eliminate his father. According to some sources, Yang Guang acquired a pill that would supposedly confer immortality on whoever consumed it. Under the pretext of offering his father this magic pill, Yang Guang served him the poison substance. Emperor Wen, trusting his own son, suspected nothing as he consumed the pill. However, he soon began to feel the deadly effects of the poison. As his health rapidly deteriorated, Yang Guang rushed to take control of the situation and ensure that his father did not survive. Emperor Wen's death was a shocking event at the imperial court and throughout the Sui Empire. News of his passing spread quickly, and Yang Guang rushed to assert the throne as the new emperor. From then on, he adopted the name Emperor Yang and began a reign characterized by cruelty and oppression. Yang Guang's usurpation of the throne did not go unnoticed, and many suspected his involvement in his father's death. However, in an attempt to consolidate his power, Ang Guang used brutal methods to silence any opposition or critics. He punished those who dared to question his rule and persecuted those he considered a threat to his authority. Emperor Yang's reign was marked by megalomania and extravagance. He spent enormous sums of money on pharaonic projects, such as the construction of the Grand Canal and the Golden Dragon Palace. His demands for forced labor in the construction of these projects caused immense suffering among the population. Yang Guang's story is a narrative marked by unbridled ambition and ruthless cruelty. In addition to the murder of his own father, 
he is also credited with several other heinous acts, including the murder of his older brother, Yang Yong, who was the rightful heir to the throne. In addition, he executed two famous poets, Wang Bo and Wang Shoren, for fear that their literary talent would eclipse his own. Yang Yong, as the rightful heir to the throne, posed a constant threat to the Yang Emperor's position. Yang Yong was considered more capable and wise than his younger brother and had won the respect and admiration of many in the imperial court. In order to eliminate this potential threat, Emperor Yang orchestrated a plot to assassinate his own brother. The construction of pharaonic works in ancient China, such as the Great Wall, the Grand Canal and the palaces of Luoyang, is a grim chapter in the country's history. These massive structures were built over many centuries and under different dynasties, but one of the most notorious rulers in enslaving and exploiting millions of people to carry out these constructions was Yang Guang, the first emperor of the Qin dynasty. The Great Wall of China is one of the most iconic projects associated with oppression and slavery under Yang Guang's rule. Although construction of the Great Wall began long before his reign, it was during his rule that major extensions and fortifications of the wall were undertaken. This massive structure was built primarily to protect the empire from raids by nomadic tribes from the north. The construction of the Great Wall involved extremely hard and dangerous work. Workers were subjected to precarious living conditions, with poor food and inadequate housing. In addition, they were exposed to disease and faced constant exhaustion due to backbreaking work and lack of adequate rest. Many workers died in the construction process, and their lives were considered expendable by the Yang Guang regime. The Grand Canal is another monumental project that involved the mass enslavement of workers. This canal was built to improve communication and transportation of goods throughout the empire, connecting the Yangtze River to the Yellow River. The construction of the Grand Canal was a colossal undertaking that required digging canals, building dams and moving huge amounts of earth and stone. Workers on the Grand Canal project also suffered extremely difficult conditions. Many of them were impoverished peasants who were forcibly recruited to work on the project. Lack of adequate food, physical exhaustion and exposure to disease made canal construction a deadly experience for most. The enslavement and exploitation of workers in these construction projects not only resulted in significant loss of life, but also left deep scars in China's historical memory. These events have been remembered for centuries as examples of the cruelty and oppression of the Yang Guang government. Despite his achievements in unifying China, Yang Guang's legacy is tainted by the human suffering inflicted in the name of building his pharaonic works. The exploitation of millions of people, most of whom were impoverished peasants, to carry out these monumental projects is a grim reminder of the lengths to which some leaders can go in their quest for power and glory. The disastrous military campaigns undertaken by Emperor Yang of the Sui dynasty in China are a dark episode in the empire's history. During his reign, Yang Guang ordered several invasions against the Goguryeo Kingdom in the Korean Peninsula and the Kampa Kingdom in Southeast Asia. These campaigns resulted in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of soldiers, the waste of enormous resources and severely weakened the Sui Empire, which eventually led to discontent and rebellion among his subjects. Emperor Yang assumed the throne in 604 and quickly embarked on a series of ambitious military campaigns to expand the territory of the Sui Empire. His main objective was to conquer the Kingdom of Goguryeo, which was located on the Korean peninsula and was a formidable rival. However, these campaigns resulted in military and humanitarian disasters of epic proportions. The war against Goguryeo was particularly costly in terms of human lives and resources. The Chinese forces faced fierce resistance from Goguryeo soldiers, who were well prepared and knew the terrain. In addition, extreme weather conditions, such as severe winters on the Korean peninsula, further complicated military operations. The Goguryeo campaigns resulted in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Chinese soldiers, and most expeditions ended in failure. The human cost was devastating, and the Sui Empire suffered a tremendous loss of resources and wealth due to these wars. Emperor Yang became obsessed with conquering Goguryeo and continued to send troops year after year, 
despite setbacks and warnings from his advisors. The military campaign against the Kingdom of Kampa, located in what is now Vietnam and Cambodia, was also a disaster. Emperor Yang intended to expand his empire into Southeast Asia and, in 605, launched an invasion against Kampa. As in the campaigns against Goguryeo, the Chinese forces met with fierce resistance and faced adverse weather conditions in the region. The war in Kampa resulted in the death of more Chinese soldiers and an even greater depletion of the empire's resources. In addition, these military campaigns led to discontent among the Chinese population. Taxes were drastically increased to finance the wars, and the common people suffered the consequences of the massive mobilization of resources and men for the military campaigns. Discontent among the subjects of the Sui Empire became increasingly evident. The population was exhausted by constant warfare, high taxes, and government oppression. Emperor Yang's policies, including the forced construction of pharaonic projects such as the Grand Canal and the Great Wall, also contributed to the general dissatisfaction. The life of Emperor Yang of the Sui dynasty in China was marked by an extravagant and decadent lifestyle, characterized by luxury, depravity, and exorbitant spending. One of the most notable facets of Emperor Yang's life was his impressive harem. It is said that he had more than 10,000 women, a staggering number even by the standards of the time. These women, known as imperial concubines, were selected from among the aristocratic and noble families of China and the regions conquered by the Sui Empire. Their main function was to provide companionship and pleasure to the emperor. The massive size of his harem was unprecedented and required enormous expense to maintain. The concubines lived in luxurious palaces within the imperial complex and were attended by a large number of servants. Emperor Yang spent a fortune on clothes, jewelry and gifts for his concubines, which drained the empire's resources. In addition to maintaining an inordinate harem, Emperor Yang was known for his expensive banquets and feasts. He would organize extravagant feasts involving thousands of guests and lasting for days, with an abundance of food, wine and entertainment. These banquets became an ostentatious display of his wealth and power, and the expenses associated with them were enormous. Music and entertainment were also an integral part of the young emperor's life. He spent considerable amounts on hiring musicians, dancers and artists to entertain him. Performances included exotic dances, live music and theatrical performances. These performances were a form of escapism for Emperor Yang and reflected his constant quest for pleasure and entertainment. One of the most infamous aspects of his life was his depraved behavior. It is said that Emperor Yang forced his concubines to perform immoral acts, including nude dancing for his own pleasure. This abuse of power and exploitation of the women in his harem are examples of his lack of moral scruples and licentious behavior. In addition, during his reign, he carried out numerous purges and extreme punishments, which created a climate of fear and oppression in the imperial court. One of the most notorious examples of his cruelty was the tragic fate of his prime minister, Yuan Shu, whose tongue he ordered to be cut out for suggesting that he abdicate in favor of his son Yang Zhao. Yuan Shu was a prominent general and politician in the Sui Empire and played an important role in consolidating the Yang Emperor's power. However, as Emperor Yang's reign progressed, he became increasingly despotic and paranoid, and his relationship with his ministers and generals became increasingly volatile. Yuan Shu's suggestion that Emperor Yang abdicate in favor of his son Yang Zhao was an act of loyalty and concern for the welfare of the empire. Yuan Shu probably believed that Emperor Yang's abdication in favor of his son would be a way to ensure a more stable and peaceful succession, thus avoiding future power struggles. However, Emperor Yang took this suggestion as a challenge to his authority and as an act of betrayal. Emperor Yang's response to Yuan Shu's suggestion was extremely brutal. Not only did he reject the idea of abdicating, but he also ordered Yuan Shu's tongue to be cut out as punishment for his audacity. This cruel act not only deprived Yuan Shu of the ability to speak, but was also a public humiliation and a clear message that any form of opposition or dissent would be punished extremely harshly. 
Yuan Shu's mutilation was just one of many cruel and brutal acts by Emperor Yang toward his ministers and generals. Throughout his reign, he executed and dismissed numerous high-ranking officials for real or imagined reasons. His paranoia and tendency to see conspiracies everywhere led him to make impulsive and lethal decisions. Emperor Yang was also known to use brutal methods of physical punishment, such as flogging and castration for those he considered traitors or dissidents. The climate of fear and repression in the imperial court under Emperor Yang's reign had a profoundly negative impact on the administration of the empire. The ruling elite lived under the constant threat of reprisals if they fell out of favor with the emperor, leading to corruption, incompetence and ineffective decision-making. In addition to the persecution of his ministers and generals, Emperor Yang also imposed an increasingly heavy burden on the common people. High taxes and excessive demands to finance his megalomaniac projects, such as the Grand Canal and the Great Wall, caused widespread suffering among the population. Finally, in 618, after a series of military defeats, civil unrest and loss of support among the ruling elite, Emperor Yang was assassinated in a coup d'état led by his own war minister, Yuan Huaji. Emperor Yang's legacy is one of tyranny, brutality, and repression. His cruelty to his ministers and generals, including the mutilation of Yuan Shu, is an example of the lengths to which a despotic leader can go to maintain his power. His reign left a grim mark on Chinese history and is a reminder of the dangers of ruthless and capricious leadership.